Hi, my name is Erin Santini Bell, and I'm a professor of civil and environmental engineering at the University of New Hampshire. But today, call me the bridge lady. And I'm going to take you on a tour of something I think is amazing. And hopefully, in about 10 minutes, so will you. First, I want you to think about all of the highway overpasses you cross or go under every day. Each one of them is necessary, but most aren't especially inspiring. Now, I want you to think about a bridge that not only serves as a connector, supports the local economy, reports back on its own well-being, monitors the river and marine life below, supports renewable energy conversion, is a source of STEM education, and looks super cool when it's lit up at night? What is this amazing bridge hidden in plain sight? It's Portsmouth's own Memorial Bridge. This local landmark does more than just link two cities and two states. It's more than a great place to walk or bike over, or a cool spot to watch the tankers move through. It's a structural engineering marvel, and quite possibly the next generation in transportation infrastructure. In fact, it can serve as a model on how we need to reimagine the job of bridges, to do more than get us from point A to point B. This reimagining is particularly important now as the U.S. embarks on investing over one trillion of your tax dollars in transportation infrastructure, including about 26 billion in bridges alone. Now, bridge construction is expensive, and it's disruptive to our community and the environment, so we need to make the most of our public investment by having our bridges do more jobs. So let's take a tour of our marvelous Memorial Bridge, or what I call the Living Bridge Project. In 2011, the Memorial Bridge, originally constructed in 1923, was in such a state of disrepair that it had to be closed. Because it was such a vital link between Portsmouth and Kittery, it had to be replaced as soon as possible. And indeed, it was replaced in an impressive 20 months. Typically, this would have taken years. This was thanks in part to the innovative design of Ted Zoli, the designer behind the Leonard P. Zakem Bunker Hill Memorial Bridge in Boston. I bet you didn't know that was the whole name. <laughs> and he's kind of a rock star bridge engineer. I bet you didn't know we had rock star bridge engineers either. <laughs> Working with the New Hampshire Department of Transportation, Zoli and his team designed a vertical lift gussetless steel truss bridge. That is a lot of engineering terminology. Let me translate. A steel truss bridge is a series of interconnected triangles, the engineer's favorite shape. I bet you didn't know we had a favorite shape. <laughs> These triangles work together to support the self-weight and the traffic of the bridge. They work as one to make the bridge strong and stable. As you can see here, the memorial bridge is made up of a network of these triangles. Now, many bridges have big beams. Now, I'm a sports fan, so let's use a basketball analogy. Those big beams are like the LeBron James of bridge support, powerhouses that do most of the work on their own. Think of the 2016 Cleveland Cavaliers and their reliance on LeBron James. Now, a steel truss bridge is like the 2008 Boston Celtics and the big three working together to get the job done. A steel truss bridge has a deeper bench, just like those Celtics, and that helps increase the safety, reliance, and robustness of the bridge. Now, an innovation at this bridge is its gussetless design. What's a gusset? So a gusset is a bracket bolted on both sides that allows vertical, horizontal, and diagonal members to be connected, essentially allowing them, because they're straight steel pieces, to change direction. Up until now, this was the only way that we could make a truss bridge, because every corner of that triangle needed a gusset. But at the gusset, that was the weakest part of the bridge. But it was also the part where things wanted to bend and twist and buckle. And this was a concern for bridge safety. 
Think about the tragic 2007 bridge collapse in Minnesota. But then, we learned how to efficiently bend and laser cut steel plate, effectively making one inch thick steel puzzle pieces, and that's a game changer. So at the Memorial Bridge, the bent and laser cut plates are welded together to sculpt a single element that results in a triangle with curved corners. So there's less gussets at the Memorial Bridge, which is why we call it gusset less. Now, <laughs> the connectors that it does have are in locations where there's less force and movement. To understand how important this is, think about a Band-Aid. A Band-Aid's much more stable on your forearm than it is on your elbow that moves around. So, while it's harder to fabricate the gussetless connection, it's easier to construct and easier to maintain, and that increases the resiliency and sustainability of our bridges. Now, lastly, as most of you know, because you've been stuck there, the Memorial Bridge is a vertical lift bridge. That means the middle chunk, or what I would call the center span, is lifted by a series of heavy steel cables and pulleys that are counterbalanced by weights on either end. The weights are those big concrete blocks with the chains attached to them. That's actually what people usually notice first about this bridge. Now, those chains were originally manufactured as anchor chains for large ships. So not only do they pay homage to the shipbuilding history of this area, but those chains participate and have the important job of maintaining balance, which reduces the energy needed to lift and lower that heavy 2.5 million pound center span. So congratulations, now you know why the Memorial Bridge is a vertical lift, gussetless steel truss bridge. <laughs> and you speak engineering, kind of. The design of this bridge is not the only thing that makes it amazing. With support from the National Science Foundation and a whole cast of partners, researchers at the University of New Hampshire gave this bridge some unique and pretty cool jobs, like the ability to report back on its own health. The Memorial Bridge is instrumented with a series of sensors that capture structural performance. What does that mean? So these sensors here are like the leads attached to your chest during an exercise stress test, except what they measure is the stretch, or what I would call strain, in the steel. Believe it or not, that steel stretches and contracts at the micro level due to traffic loads and environmental conditions like wind and temperature. Now, these sensors here measure the movement of the bridge during that lift operation. They capture the vibration of the bridge, including the rate at which that vibration goes to zero when that heavy center span is lowered back into place. This is like when you take note of how long it takes your pulse to return to zero after you've exercised. As your physical health changes, that rate changes. It's the exact same thing for a bridge's health. Now, the ability of this bridge to capture the data is then shared with bridge owners and designers and researchers like me, so we can learn more about bridge behavior. And we can answer questions like, could the plates on this bridge have been thinner, or should they be thicker for the next bridge? And this leads to safer, more robust, and more resilient bridges. Now, <laughs> yeah. Now, the ability to report back on its, own, <laughs> on its own health is not the only reason that this is the Living Bridge Project. If you look into the water, you'll see something sticking out of the bridge. That's a platform that supports a tidal turbine. That's like a wind turbine, but underwater. A tidal turbine has the potential to convert a lot more energy than a wind turbine, because as most of you or maybe some of you will remember from your high school physics class, the denser the matter, the more kinetic energy it has when it moves. So water is about 800 times denser than air. So that means a water, or in this case, a tidal turbine, can potentially convert about 800 times more energy than a wind turbine. Now, the turbine at this bridge is three meters, or about nine feet in diameter, and it converts enough tidal energy 
into electrical energy to power about two average New Hampshire households. Now, this is a proof of concept, but what if we changed our bridges design a little bit, or a lot, and we actually installed an array of these turbines? We could effectively have our bridges be mini power plants that could feed energy back to the grid, increasing their sustainability and reducing their carbon footprint. Now, the bridge has the important, very difficult job of making all this happen by staying still. <laughs> it provides a stable foundation for these turbines. The platform at the Memorial Bridge collects data about the Piscataqua River, its salt content, its temperature, its tidal speed. All of this information helps us monitor this vital tidal estuary, and it increases the societal benefit of this bridge. So I hope you're beginning to see how this bridge capitalizes on every tax dollar invested by doing more than just crossing the river. Now, because this bridge is so cool, you are not the first group to check it out. <laughs> Students and educators from kindergarten to the doctoral level have explored, experimented, and learned from this outdoor laboratory. In fact, this bridge has its own touring production. We brought the idea of this bridge to school and community groups throughout New England. We've shared our findings with researchers across the U.S. and the world, all the way to Johannesburg, South Africa. Sharing the STEM applications and advancements at this bridge is another way we increase its societal benefit by inspiring the next generation of innovators. Living bridges like the Memorial Bridge are a model of how we need to maximize the societal benefit of every tax dollar invested in our infrastructure by having it do more jobs. Cross a river, connect a community, support innovative clean energy strategies, collect structural, marine, environmental data, and be an outdoor STEM learning laboratory. To accomplish this, we need vision, like Ted Zoli's. We have to push past what we thought was possible for bridge design and construction. Collaboration between local and state, industrial, federal, academic, community partners is always required for that. It's time we stop taking our bridges for granted. After all, we pay for them. But more importantly, they are integral to our social fabric. They allow us to get to school and work, goods and services. They allow us to gather with friends and family, but some of them can do more. So the next time you drive or bike or walk across the Memorial Bridge, think about all of the jobs it does and how it changes your world. And then think about how more bridges like it in the future can change our world. Thank you.